Okay, I'm here today with Dr. Lindsay Ross Stewart, a sports psychologist and professor at Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. And she's gonna to talk to us a little bit about mental fitness for sports officials from her perspective. Welcome and thank you for joining me. Um, so in your opinion, um, why is the thank mental- Thank you for having me. You, you're very welcome. Um, why is mental fitness or the mental side of an official's game so important? I think often in the world of sports, we forget about the mental side for officials or for referees. And the reality is they are out there just like the coaches, just like the players having to make decisions in really high pressure situations. You know, these are split second decisions and we have really high expectations for our referees and for officials. So recognizing that and recognizing that the same tools that we use to help athletes manage that pressure that we help, we use to help coaches learn how to self-regulate, that those same skills and strategies are incredibly important to help referees really handle the pressure of those quick decision moments that they have to be 100% on and focused for long periods of time in a game. You know, they don't get subs. So being able to really handle it from start to finish is important. Exactly. And, you know, so much emphasis is put on the physical training and game knowledge and, you know, especially when you get to a higher level, but nobody really looks at that mental side of an official's game where, you know, athletes train the mental side of the game and coaches train in that way, too. So, you know, how do you think then that that because referees train for physical performance, how do you think that, you know, that mental performance and physical performance works together and what can officials do to kind of enhance that? Well, I think that's a great question. We know how important it is to be physically prepared, but we also know that when we are physically exhausted, so for any person, if you are physically at your limit, it can be hard to be really clear minded. And so sports psychology, mental training is a way to really help make sure you're fully focused while physically exhausted, while pushing yourself physically and having those skills. So when we working with officials would really be about and is really about, you know, how do you manage that stress? You know, what breathing techniques are you doing? You know, when the whistle blows, what are you doing to make sure that you're focused? What are you doing to stay focused on what's important and not let the distractions get to you? We know that referees can take a lot of uh, heat or a lot of pressure from fans and coaches and players. And so how do they leave that aside so they can truly focus on their job. And just like for an athlete, an athlete who can let the mistakes go, an athlete who can let the pressure go or the comments from the fans go is more successful. The same is true for referees. So I think, you know, a lot of officials suggest that, you know, making an incorrect call or being abused by a fan or a player or a coach puts the most stress on them when they're, you know, when they're out there and doing their games. So how do you think officials can prepare then uh, to be prepared for that level of stress or that level of pressure? in a game situation. You know, in sports psychology, we talk a lot about something called stress inoculation. And one of the things that we talk about in that is really preparing and knowing it's going to happen. So referees need to understand the expectations of that, to be prepared for that, to talk about it. What is it going to feel like when you're being heckled? And sometimes we have a culture where people are expected to say, oh, I'll be fine. It won't matter. Well, no, you won't be fine. It does matter. So talk that through beforehand. What are the feelings? Am I going to feel pressure? to succumb or to have a different call later to make up for it or start to question myself. Okay, if that is what I'm gonna feel, what's my plan in those moments? What's the strategy that I'm gonna to use to put myself back into the game and into the moment so that I can handle it? So I think the first thing is to acknowledge that those are really challenging situations and anyone who's ever been a referee or an umpire, an official who says that that's never affected them is lying. I mean, it can affect you. It does affect you in different moments. And so knowing that and developing the plan is really important kind of first step. And then what is that plan look like? And that plan looks different for different people, just like every athlete's plan looks different. You know, what are the things that you think about, you know, if you do make a mistake or if the fans are questioning you or you know you made the right call, but you can't really defend yourself, that's not the job. So what are the thoughts you have? How does that make you feel? You know, the answer to that question is the step that helps you figure out what techniques to actually use. So, you know, you and, and you work a lot with players. I know you work a lot with, with athletes. So can you discuss a little bit, you know, maybe that dynamic then between, you know, a player who is mentally prepared and, and coaches and officials and, and, and how that gamesmanship aspect or, you know, the, the mental games that they play, how that impacts an official? I think that's complicated, you know, and probably pretty uh, specific, but certainly, Athletes, you know, when they are mentally prepared, if they make a mistake themselves, they just move on. They understand that that sport in some ways is just a game of who made the fewest mistakes, you know, or who can get past their mistakes the fastest. So 
So athletes who have that, those skills to be able to move on tend not to get wrapped up in the referee calls. They tend not to get overwhelmed with that. But there are lots of athletes who really struggle and get frustrated. And the referee happens to be out there to be the target of some of that frustration. But I think it's really important to recognize that when referees can respond to that calmly, they stay in control of the game. When, you know, as human beings, if someone shows us a lot of aggression, our instinct is often to match that. Mm -hmm. But that's problematic in sport and it's pretty problematic for a referee. So we need, if it, there's aggression, for it to be calmed down, for that control to be there. And so in those situations where athletes don't have the skills to regulate themselves, for the referee to be a calming force can be important or to not, to not match it when they're targeted. It's a little different with coaches. I mean, I think coaches in general um, have, although we don't talk about it a lot, I think they actually have pretty good relationships with their refs in a lot of situations. And they often have referees who ref a lot of their same games. They understand each other, but there will be times when they're frustrated by a call. And it's the same thing. A ref who can just explain it and move on tends to have a coach who can calm down faster. But trying to match it or convince them or yelling back tends to exacerbate a situation. Uh, so I think that relationship between all of them is important. Now, of course, we have coaches sometimes it doesn't matter what the ref says. It's still going to you know, get extreme. But I think that's few and far between for the most part. Yeah, I agree. I think that you know the, the communication skills that referees have really enhance their ability to manage a game. Um, you know, and I and, and I think that you know that also potentially gives them a, an edge. Um, do you think you agree with that? That you know, if the referees that do have those skills that you know are mentally fit as well as physically fit, um, really can manage a game a little bit better and do have an edge. Oh, I th I think there's no question of that. You know, in all jobs, if you have communication skills, you are better at the job. And that is certainly true in a job in which you are constantly surrounded by people in high pressure situations. So referees, officials who have communication skills, who don't let other people's emotional experiences impact their emotional experience and can calmly explain what they're doing, really do have an edge. And I think the ability to do that is communication, but it's also confidence. You know, confidence in the call that I made, confidence that I can control this game. Confidence that I am in charge and that I don't have to deal with every little thing that an athlete says to me or every little thing that a coach says to me, that I can just be confident that I know what I'm doing. I think officials who have that really do have an edge. And I've seen that when I go to a lot of sporting events. I have seen that time and time again where an uh, official may be challenged on something, but if they can be calm and communicate, not only in that moment does it calm things down and keep the game in control, but the game itself for the rest of the game will stay in more control than if a referee matches it with anger or frustration or defensiveness. Do you think if a, a referee then has a good outcome, so they're a good communicator and they've been able to manage the game, that they're, they're more likely to be more motivated to continue on? I know that you know, in sports, there's some issues with retention and longevity for officials. Um, so do you think, again, that this plays into their, you know, their longevity or their you know, being motivated to go back on the field again? I think sometimes we forget that umpires and officials are a necessary and important part of the sport experience and we need them and they deal with a lot and fans are not the nicest to them sometimes and coaches and players and they do deal with a lot and I think being able to control the game and being able to communicate and be confident is absolutely a buffer for burnout and we know referee burnout is real and that it can be really difficult when you go to work every day and people yell at you. I mean in no other job would we consider that to be okay. So if you the skills of communication and confidence then absolutely the experience will be better and then that positive experience will be more motivating to want to continue on in the field. Now do you think this is true for uh, elite referees or referees at all levels? Because you know the, the oh, I think it's true for referees at all levels. <laughs> yeah okay. uh, you know graduate students ref youth like eight seven eight year olds and they take a lot of abuse from parents you know, and so they even ask, like, why am I doing this? But I, so I think at all levels, the more we can sort of give these skills to officials, the more effective it will be. And of course, at the high levels, you don't get to be a high level official unless you've, you know, been an official at, at lower levels. So we need, in the same way that we need coaches to start at lower levels and work their way through, we need the system to work that way. And we don't want coaches to quit. It's the same thing with officials. We need them to feel these skills and to get and to have these communication skills, confidence skills, to be motivated, to feel valued in their job at the lowest level that they're at official at so that they can continue in the system to these high levels in professional sports. Yeah, I definitely agree. So what recommendation then would you give to officials to 
potentially trained to be mentally fit? I mean, obviously I'm biased, but meet with a sports psychologist. You know, I think referees don't think about sports psychologists as someone who's for them. And there are several sports psychologists, sports psychology consultants who work with referees specifically and sort of have that as a target group. But really anybody who trains athletes and coaches can work with officials because it's the same techniques, just specialized to the official experience. Um, read books on mental training. And I think some of that, the most important thing for some of that is to be a little bit self-aware. So to do self-reflection, you know, do I get defensive when coaches challenge me? Do I get too angry or am I actually calm? You know, am I confident? Are there certain calls I'm hesitant to make because I know that they're going to lead to a certain reaction? Doing some internal self-reflection is really important. And then go to the experts or go to the books and read on those specific things. Okay, I want to build my confidence. I'm going to go read a book on mental training and confidence building for athletes and then translate that to myself or go out and get very many, but a couple books for officials. Great. Now, if there's any other tips, anything else that you'd like to, again, my website will be launching at the end of July. Um, is there any other recommendations that you'd like to give to any officials? You know, there are lots of different things that officials can be doing. And again, you know, to go to the resources that they have, it's hard to sort of teach them all in a short video clip like this. But to know there are things like putting yourself in that game scenario ahead of time, use your visualization, use your imagery, you know, think about the things you're saying to yourself. You know, that self-talk's really important for officials as well. You know, do you let go of a, of a mistake? Because you probably will make one. You know, you're human, <laughs> officials are human beings, they make So how do you, how do you overcome that? I think we have this interesting thing where in sports we expect mistakes from athletes, we expect mistakes from coaches, but then we act somehow like we shouldn't ever have a mistake from an official and that's just not realistic. Of course, officials are gonna make mistakes, but how do you learn from that and how do you move on from it quickly in a game? So I think using some of these techniques and going out to get them is really important. And the first step to that is that, like I said, that sort of self-awareness, but also owning that you don't know everything. You know, we say the same thing, an athlete can't get mental training if they think they have it all figured out. So really being open to understanding that it's important and it's, it is confidence to be able to go out there and say, I need to learn more and I need to do more um, and to embrace that because it will only help each official get better. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate your, your, this interview. Um, and, uh, you know, Lindsay is definitely an expert in the field of sports psychology um, and we hope to hear more from her soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.